And good afternoon, everybody. Chris Bartell here from the Cascade Pacific Council with today's Wednesday webinar. Today, we're going to talk about why we scout, why scouting, a little bit of history and things of that nature. It's going to be great. We're having uh, one of our guests, one of our is an awesome scouters, uh, an awesome scouter, and he's just fantastic, Jerry Schlining. He's going to give us his why and give us a little history. It's fantastic. So we're going to get into that in just a moment here. But first, of course, just as we do every Wednesday, we like to give you our latest and greatest news updates from around the Cascade Pacific Council. So let's get into that, shall we? But first of all, we're going to start off with our safety moment, as we've been doing this year, as we should do on it the beginning of our of our meetings and today we're going to talk a little bit about covid we have some covid updates at cpcbsa.org slash covid not anything super huge but for units you do want to know that of course we still have the mask requirements for indoors and we have a new meeting log that we want to keep that we want you to keep track of and use for like five weeks. So actually you want to go to cpcbsa.org slash COVID and you'll see the download there to download this new meeting slash attendance log. And really it should be used for any scouting meetings. And it's just to really do some contact tracing and things like that if somebody were to catch COVID. And uh, so anyway, check that out. There are some also, also some uh, great questions to ask for the beginning of your meetings. So check that out again at cpcbsa.org slash COVID. That's our safety moment for today. All right, let's go around the horn and talk about the latest and greatest news from around the Cascade Pacific Council, shall we? Horses, who's interested in, in going on a horse ride? By golly, we have lots of opportunities for horse rides for the whole family, actually. So let's go into that. First of all, little buckaroo, little buckaroo is back. It's for the young scouts, the young kids ages six to nine can jump on the horses for a great day of learning about horse horseback riding and skills training and horse safety. It's awesome. So check that out at cpcbsa.org slash horses. This is happening actually basically as we run up to summer camp. So check it out. Really great opportunity to meet the horses, especially for the young scouts who are going to head to Butte Creek this year. Maybe they might even find a favorite horse, which would be super fun. So check that out at cpcbsa.org slash horses. Also on that same page, you can see all about our weekend horse rides, which are happening as we speak. So you can get half day rides for 60 bucks and full day rides for 120 bucks. It's great. Uh, anyone from ages 10 and up can join that. You can do it with families and youth. And uh, it's just an awesome opportunity to meet our horses, the largest horse herd of any council in the in the entire Boy Scouts of America. So check that out. Also, here's a reminder, it doesn't have to do with horses necessarily, unless you decide you want to join camp staff with one of our camps that has horses. So if you want to go to Baldwin or Butte Creek, by golly, and be a part of camp staff, you'll get to hang out with the horses too. But we do need camp staff. This is really important as we uh, jump into a real deal summer camp season. And so interviews are starting this weekend with my friend and cohort here. Chris Harold is doing those and it's going to be great. He's got some great tips and information at CPCBSA dot org slash camp staff you'll see the ages there we're really looking for uh, anybody older than 15 can join in in a variety of levels there are really great opportunities for anyone of different skill sets you don't have to be a rah-rah person or you can be a rah-rah person uh, you can even be somebody who just likes to cook for a whole gaggle of people we also need medics that's really really important so check that out at cpcbsa.org slash camp staff also, hold on one second here. We're going to make sure we're, we're all, everything's rolling here on the webinar here and we're all good. Okay, I was just checking for technical difficulties here. So always a little something you got to be in, uh, on task with here. So uh, one other thing that we want to mention here, really important too, and this is a deadline that's looming, uh, sort of looming, it's happening fast, it'll be here faster than you know it, is our spring scouting for food. This is super awesome. We are doing spring scouting for food, as well as a lot of you do the wintertime scouting for food, but we had the food banks and pantries were asking for our help, basically, to replenish the food banks in the spring. So this year, if you don't know this already, we've launched Spring Scouting for Food. It's going to be the first Saturday of March, so that's March 5th, and we really want uh, help from scouts and scout units from all over the place, and uh, we really could use your help, and we already have 80 units who have registered to get these fun new door hangers, and uh, you can go to cpcbsa.org slash 
SFF, as in Scouting for Food, and you can order those. We originally had a deadline by the end of this month, but what we're going to do is we're going to order some extras. So we want to, for all of you who actually want to dive in here and do this, you can still place an order for those. We just want to know who who is doing Scouting for Food and how many you need, how many of these flyers you need. And basically, we want you to order them. And then you can contact your local food bank or partner, and we will deliver these door hangers in February, or you can pick them up at the scout office, and uh, then you'll distribute the flyers in late February, and then do your pickup on March 5th. We will have more exciting news about this here next week, so let's just say you're going to all want to get in on it. We have an awesome partner who is going to help us spread the good cheer and the good word about scouting for food, so join us for that. Also, super weekends are coming here soon, March and April, and actually in September as well for Scouts BSA, but it's awesome because we have new super weekends for Cub Scout packs this year. We've This is a brand new thing for us, and it's going to be awesome. So it's kind of like mini summer camp where you just get to go to camp and just play with a lot of the, the toys, as I like to say, which is super, super fun. And for those of you who have never been to Camp Merriweather or Butte Creek, what an awesome, awesome opportunity to get to know these camps and see them in action and get a taste of what summer camp is going to be like. So check it out at cpcbsa.org. There are multiple weekends. uh, So you actually want to go to the adventures tab and you'll see super weekend listed underneath there. So check that out. All the information is there. And there are spots are filling up fast for that. So you're going to want to jump in on that ASAP. Speaking of spots filling up fast, I just heard from the program team that Meriting with the Experts, these are merit badge courses for Scouts BSA at the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum. These spots are filling up fast too. There are tons of opportunities over the next couple of months So you're going to want to check it out at cpcbsa.org slash calendar. We have multiple merit badges, as you can see here, for those of you who are watching, uh, American Labor, Engineering, Aviation, and Sustainability. For those of you who just end up listening later to the recording of this, uh, I just wanted to mention those. But again, these are filling up fast. Great opportunities to to complete an entire merit badge course or get a partial on that. So so check that out at cpcbsa.org slash calendar. Just do a search for meriting under the calendar and you'll see all of the opportunities there and the links. Okay, a couple save the date things are happening in the future, but you know, good to good to have these in the in the back of your mind or in some cases in the front of your mind. If you're wanting to go to Wood Badge, for instance, we had a webinar on this recently, so you can go to cpcbsa.org/webinars and check out the webinar Andrew Danner gave us his spiel and his team. It was awesome, so you'll get to meet some of the team that's running Wood Badge. Wood Badge is for adults, it is an opportunity to just really grow and learn in your knowledge of scouting, but it's also really for per- personal and professional development. So it's just a great, great leadership course, and that is in September. So go to cpcbsa.org slash woodbadge for that. Also, Jamboree, World Jamboree and National Jamboree happening in 2023. World Jambo, as we like to say, is happening in Korea in August of 2023. You can go to wsj2023.us for information on that. Oh my gosh, these are epic, epic experiences with scouts in World Jambo's case from all over the world, literally from all over the world. And for National Jamboree, which is happening in July of 2023, it is an awesome opportunity to meet scouts from all over the United States. And you can find out more about that at cpcbsa.org slash jamboree. These, I've had both of my boys have been to these and it is in absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible. So check that out. Okay, a couple other things. Save the date for May 13th through 15th. Speaking of leadership for adults, this is the Outdoor Skills Institute. We're working on registration for that. So these are adult-only classes for climbing instruction, a whole bunch of actual instruction classes. So I find it really fascinating because we really focus on safety here in so many, so many ways. And this is just a great way to learn about how this stuff works. So whether it's it's climbing on the rock on the rock climbing towers or being a, a shooting range instructor, it, this is a great opportunity to learn about that. So you can check that out here. Uh, check your emails. For those of you in the Cascade Pacific Council, we'll have emails on this as well and links for that. Okay, in other news, a couple of quick things here. Just wanted to mention that you can support scouting here at with Camp for All. Our Camp for All campaign is, is kickstarting as we speak or has actually kickstarted. For those of you who've been 
paying attention, but you can, uh, if units who are doing this, which all of you should be, is at cpcbsa.org slash start camp for all. You can get all the resources there. We literally have a step-by-step -step guide in how you can support the camp for all campaign. For those of you who don't know what the camp for all campaign is, it is an opportunity to help scouts get to camp and give them an epic, awesome, first-class, world-class, amazing experience because the camp for all campaign is specifically geared for camping and camp programs. So check that out at cpcbsa.org slash start camp for all. And for those of you who are interested in just learning more about it, you can go to cpcbsa.org slash camp for all, that's camp, the number for all, and find out how camp for all impacted us uh, actually last year. Really amazing, actually the last few years. You can see where all the money went and it's really, really amazing to have the incredible support, the people who love scouting and just love the Pacific Northwest and love getting kids out in the outdoors Camp for All is how you support that. Also, for those of you who enjoy shotgun shooting or golf, how about the combination of both? It is the Kerr Contractors Sporting Clays Shootout. This is our 20th anniversary of this event. It is awesome. It is where you grab a team and you basically do golf with guns. It's pretty amazing. You can go to cpcbsa.org slash shootout. It is a hoot. It is awesome. Uh, you'll see some video there. It is a kick. And if you want to, even if you just want to be a part of it in terms of, of uh, being a part of the auction and have auction items, that would be great too. We'd love your support there. Go to cpcbsa.org slash shootout. One other opportunity that I'll mention in terms of being a part of Camp Merriweather's history is that you can actually sponsor a Camp Merriweather staff bunkhouse. These are amazing, beautiful, brand new facilities. So speaking of camp staff, Gang, we need your help, and uh, you should probably come check out the new facilities we have for you at Camp Merriweather. It's pretty awesome. So I think all the camp staff are going to be fighting for this job, actually, for a job here at Camp Merriweather. But it's awesome. And if you would like to support us, uh, just reach out to Mike Egan at michael.egan, that's E-G-A-N, at scouting.org. If you'd like to sponsor a Camp Merriweather staff bunkhouse and, and either put your name on it, your family's name, whatever it is, and just be a part of Camp Merriweather history, that would be fantastic. Uh, one other thing I want to mention here is there's a new marketing campaign from the Boy Scouts of America. It's all focused on Adventure On, which of course fits with our adventure grit and growth theme that we like to promote here in the Cascade Pacific Council. This, this is what we're all about, adventure grit and growth. And Adventure On is the new marketing campaign from the Boy Scouts of America. You can actually see the links to all the assets for this at cpcbsa.org slash marketing, the marketing guy for the council that you're looking at right here or listening to. Uh, he's going to be punching up this, uh, this URL here, cpcbsa.org slash marketing because lots of new tools coming down the pipe, lots of new tools that we've got. We've honed in on some things to help scout units, help us spread the good cheer and the good word about all the awesome things that we do in scouts. All right, let's dive into today's actual theme and topic. I know you weren't here to talk to listen to all the stuff that I have to talk about, but isn't it exciting? There's so many things that uh, we're doing that we're back at it with scouts. It's just fantastic. And speaking of which, this is a great uh, segue, if you will, into why the heck do we scout? Not just what it is we do, but really the mission and the vision of scouting. And so I reached out to Jerry Schleining. He is... Well, he wears, I think, about 30 hats here in the Cascade Pacific Council of the Boy Scouts of America and probably has worn about every hat So, from a volunteer perspective. So Jerry is fantastic. He is a cheerleader for, for scouting and for all the things that we do for adventuring and getting kids outdoors. And so I asked Jerry, who was actually also one of our University of Scouting uh, professors, instructors, he uh, actually gave a talk about why scouting and the mission. And so what's really fun is I had him just explain to us what is the what is the why of scouting and give us a little history. So he's going to give us his take on it here. And uh, so check it out. Thanks so much, Jerry, for all you do for us and and for giving us this background, this history. I think you will all enjoy it. Hi there, my name is George Lining, and I'd like to welcome you to this session on why we do scouting. My current scouting position is as an assistant council commissioner for the Cascade Pacific Council, and I have a deep passion for this scouting program. We've all heard the saying that scouting is a game with a purpose. This saying made its first real appearance in the Scoutmaster Handbook third edition 
in 1936 written by William Greenbar Bill Hillcourt, one of my personal heroes. Hillcourt got the idea, of course, from Baden Powell's Scouting in a Nutshell. Here then is Scouting in a Nutshell, a game for boys under the leadership of boys with the wise guidance and counsel of a grown-up who has still the enthusiasm of youth in him. A purposeful game, but a game just the same. A game that develops character by practice, that trains for citizenship through experience in the out of doors. So what about it? It's a game with a purpose. In other words, what we do in scouting is attached to a why. Why do we do the things we do in scouting? To answer this question, we need to look to the mission and vision of the Boy Scouts of America. The mission of the Boy Scouts of America is to prepare young people to make ethical and moral choices over their lifetimes by instilling in them the values of the Scout Oath and Law. And the vision of the BSA is that the Boy Scouts of America will prepare every eligible youth in America to become a responsible participating citizen and leader who is guided by the Scout Oath and Law. These statements lead us to an understanding of why we do what we do, not in the practical sense or the nuts and bolts, but the overall why. Scouting is even a thing to prepare every eligible youth to make ethical choices and become responsible participating citizens and leaders by instilling in them the oath and law. Simon Sinek in his book, Start With Why, said people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. This is profound and worth taking a minute to explore. Why do we do scouting? What are people buying when they join? Well, I think we find that in the statements that we've already discussed, that vision and, and mission. The mission and vision of the Boy Scouts of America sums up what we're selling and trying to accomplish. The next piece of the puzzle then is to understand how and why we do the things that we do. The foundation of scouting is found in our values. The values found in the Scout Oath and Law. It's no wonder the Boy Scouts of America starts our scouts learning and understanding them from the very start. They are values that are both timeless and are at the core of everything that we do. I recently heard an interview with Medal of Honor recipient, Senior Chief Britt Slabinski. In the interview, he was sharing a story of the night that his actions earned him the Medal of Honor. One of his teammates had fallen out of a helicopter and was quickly becoming surrounded by Taliban forces. When others in the helicopter were debating whether to go to the aid of their teammates, Slabinski recalled the only thing going through his mind was that line in the scout oath that charged him to do his best. On my honor, I will do my best. He stated that he repeated that line over and over, and on the third time he stood and exited the rear of the helicopter, telling his team they had to go, and they had to go now. This is a single example, and I'm not suggesting that we all go above and beyond the call of duty and put ourselves in harm's way, but it's exactly what instilling the values of the oath and law mean. Because in that moment, that's all he could think about. I will do my best. I will do my best. I will do my best. But what game with a purpose did Slabinski and millions of other scouts play to get there? What is the game? 
Well, in short, it's everything that we do in scouting that moves us in the direction of instilling the oath and law and preparing you to be responsible citizens and leaders that make ethical choices. To do this, the BSA has given us a great set of tools, the aims and methods. If we apply the game to the aims and methods, we are sure not to fall short in accomplishing the mission. The aims of the Boy Scouts of America are character development, leadership development, citizenship training, and personal fitness. So now we're getting closer we're drilling down the rules of the game, character development, leadership development, and personal fitness. So let me stop right there. So far, I've given you stuff that you all should already know. The mission, the vision, the values of scouting. Then we throw in the aims, which is really a fine tuning of what we do in scouting. If we just stop there though, it's just another club. It's just another club for youth that moves them through their lives. We hope they get something out of it, and along the way they might learn some skills for life, but until we really understand why we are just another youth club. It's imperative that the adults of the program understand this why. The scouts will get it in the long run, kind of like Slabinski. In too many units, and understandably so, the adults, or better yet, the parents, come to scouting with a basic understanding of what scouting is, you know, uh, like being helpful, going camping, tying knots, selling popcorn, helping little old ladies across the street, you know, scouting. But the thing that sets scouting apart from any, if not every other youth program is our firm foundation on this game with a purpose, the why of the organization. Okay, so how do we develop this into our new or old, older parents that currently don't really understand the why of scouting. Well, let's start with the stuff that we see, the methods of scouting. By and large, the methods of scouting are the same throughout the program from Cub Scouting all the way through Venturing. For the sake of this discussion though, we'll just strictly look at Scouts BSA. The methods are the tangible tools that moves us to achieve the aims and where we can really make a difference in instilling why in both adults and youth. Once the adults get it, your unit will have a different outlook on how your program is delivered. We're not gonna do a deep dive into the, the methods of scouting, but we do need to have a brief discussion on what they are and their meaning to gain a better understanding of the why. The methods as stated really become what Cynic said is why people buy our product. So let's break down the methods. The ideals. The ideals of scouting are spelled out in the Scout Oath and Law and the motto and the slogan. These are not just ways to start and end a meeting they should be woven into everything that we do in scouting. It is a method that the scout will measure themselves against these ideals and continuously try to improve. The goals are high and as they reach them, they have some control over what and who they become. Remember, the goals are high and they need to be kept high. We adults should be modeling the, these ideals and provide good examples of how they can be lived in our daily lives. Our ideals reinforce character development. Patrols. The patrol method gives an experience in group living and participating in citizenship. 
It places responsibility on young shoulders and teaches scouts how to accept it. The patrol method allows the scouts to interact in small groups where they can easily relate to each other. These small groups determine troop activities through their elected representatives. The patrol method is not always pretty, but is a safe environment for scouts to make and learn from their mistakes. The patrol method reinforces the aims of character development and leadership development. The outdoor program. Scouting is designed to take place in the outdoors. It is in the outdoors setting that scouts share responsibilities and learn to live with one another. It is here that skills and activities practiced at troop meetings come alive with purpose. The outdoors is the laboratory for scouts to learn and play the game of scouting. It is not just a camp out or a bike hike. It's an opportunity to learn and develop as a young person. The outdoor program reinforces all of the aims of scouting. Advancement. Scouting provides a series of surmountable obstacles and steps in overcoming them through the advancement method. The scouts plan their advancement and progress at their own pace as they meet each challenge. The scout is rewarded for each achievement, which helps them gain self-confidence. The steps in the advancement system help a scout grow in self-reliance and in the ability to help others. Be mindful not to place too much importance on the pace of advancement. It is the association with adults as coaches and mentors that assist in advancement and setting that pace with the individual scout. On Light Cub Scouts, advancement at the B Scouts BSA level is up to the individual scout. Remember that the goal is not to make Eagle Scouts. The goal of every scout leader should be to coach a scout to first class. This will set the foundation and provide the tools for success for the scout to achieve these obstacles. The advancement method also reinforces all of the aims of scouting, character development, leadership development, and personal fitness. Association with adults. Scouts learn a great deal by watching how adults conduct themselves. Scout leaders cannot turn off the fact that they are scout leaders. Scout leaders are to be a positive role model for the members of their troop. A scout leader that is willing to listen to every scout, encourages them, and takes sincere interest in them can make a profound difference in their lives. Adult association reinforces character development and leadership development. Personal growth. As scouts plan their activities and progress toward their goals, they experience personal growth. A good turn, the, the good turn concept is a major part of personal growth in scouting. Young people grow as they participate in community service projects and doing good turns for others. Probably no device is so successful in developing a basis for personal growth as the good turn. Frequent personal conferences with their scoutmaster help each scout to determine their growth toward scouting aims. Character development and personal fitness are practiced in this method. Now is a great time to remind ourselves that personal fitness is not just about keeping ourselves physically fit, but also about mental and emotional fitness. Let's talk about leadership development. The scouting program encourages scouts to learn and practice leadership skills. Every scout can participate 
in both shared and total leadership situations. Understanding the concepts of leadership and becoming a servant leader helps a scout accept the leadership role of others and guides them towards participating citizenship and character development. And here's where the rubber meets the road in why we do what we do in scouting. Servant leadership. The best way to instill this in our scouts is to practice and demonstrate being a servant leader. As we show our scouts what it means to be a servant leader, putting others' needs above our own, we can truly see the impact of scouting in their lives. Servant leadership is woven throughout the scout oath and the law and becomes the hallmark of why we do what we do in scouting. And it sets us apart from every other youth group in America. The uniform. The uniform makes the scout troop visible as a force for good and creates a positive youth image in the community. The uniform gives the scout identity as a member of a team. It also demonstrates that we are in a world brotherhood of youth who believe in the same ideals. The uniform is practical attire for scout activities. Well, okay, it's getting better. And it provides the scout a place to put badges and show what they've accomplished. The uniform is not an optional method and creates a level playing field within the unit. We all look the same, and as leaders, we should reinforce the idea that there is no bias based on race, on gender, or economic status. We are simply all part of a team that is trying to make the world a better place. The eight methods of scouting are non-negotiable. They all must be used to fulfill the promise of scouting. They are the pillars that hold up the program and in short are how we answer the question of why we do what we do in scouting. When we understand that all of these components together make up the whole of scouting, then we can deliver a program that leads every youth in our program to becoming responsible, participating citizens that will make ethical choices over their lifetimes. Okay, but do we really believe that? I mean, do you really believe that? It looks great on paper, but what does it really look like? For scouts, it's messy, and it's sometimes a confusing game. For new families, it might look intimidating or even ritualistic when they come to their first meeting. But for us adults, for us adult leaders of scouting, it is the question that each one of us need to ask. Do we understand the program and our goals enough to achieve that aim? Or are we just another youth club? The answer to the why of scouting is certainly found in the values and in the mission and in the vision of the Boy Scouts of America. But is it found in the way that we actually deliver the program? Is it found in the way that we coach and mentor the youth of our units? Is it demonstrated in the way that we treat one another and practice servant leadership? If it's just another club, then none of this matters. If we truly believe that what we are doing makes a difference, then it will. In NYLT and in the ticket process of Wood Badge, we often say that if we can see it, we can be it. 
My fear is that we often overlook the real why in scouting and just make it another activity without purpose. Scouting is not just another club or activity, but a purpose-driven organization that if we do this right, we can absolutely change the world. Baden-Powell's vision was simple in 1908, to promote morality and good citizenship in the rising generation. He saw a need and had a solution. The issue at hand was not a need for another club, but for an organization that would change the lives of British youth. That vision was shared as the United States adopted scouting in 1910 with the same purpose. The founders of scouting understood that youth need to be given the tools in a way in which they learn, not how adults learn, and the game with a purpose had begun. We play that same game today. The playing field has changed some. The uniforms are a little bit different. And the gear is certainly a lot better. But at the core remains our values and aims to achieve the goals of scouting. It is our value proposition for those that play the game and those that we invite to come along with us. I appreciate you coming along with me today. I hope you got something out of this. My contact information is gonna pop up. If you have any questions or you'd like to leave me a comment, feel free to email me. I'll be glad to get back with you. Remember that the why is answered in all that we do in scouting if we do it right. Thanks again. I appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time to be a scout leader. Have a great scouting day. Well, thanks, Jerry. Really, really appreciate that. That was uh, just absolutely just, just fantastic. I mean, he, as you, you all saw, uh, Jerry just really, really nailed it. It's, uh, it's really awesome for us, to, for scout leaders like myself and the rest of us out there to just remember why we do uh, what we do and how important it is. It is not just the adventures. While the adventures are awesome, I personally just absolutely love the adventures myself, but it is, it's absolutely fascinating and fantastic to remember and reflect uh, all of what scouting is all about and why we actually do what we do. So thank you so much, Jerry. Just really can't, I can't say enough how much we appreciate you, uh, those of us who work for the Cascade Pacific Council and all the other leaders out there. Uh, and boy, it is a team, it is an absolute team effort. So thanks so much for that. And as you know, for those of you who have tuned in previously, all of these uh, webinars are recorded. We do an audio version as well as the video version, and it's on our website. And we end up sending an email email out on Thursday. So these webinars happen obviously on Wednesdays. Then we send out an email on Thursdays with the links to all of this. So you'll have that here uh, within the next day. And so I just wanted to give you a quick other note here. Give me one second here. I'm going to share my screen because next week I'm excited about this. Speaking of amazing, fantastic volunteers, Deb Hildebrand of PAC 351 is going to join us. And she is, uh, she is going to give us some incredible, incredible resources for Cub Scout leaders uh, for dens and packs. She has created just an incredible array of tools and tips and just resources that you will be you will be blown away. I guarantee it. So please join us next Wednesday for the webinar. You can go to cpcbsa.org slash calendar actually. And that's where you can actually find a, a link to get a, a reminder and to download an actual reminder for your calendar. So join us for that. It's going to 
to be at noon. And of course, we'll have the resources. For those of you who can't join us at noon, I know what we try and do here is we try and get this all packaged up, put together so that you can actually view it and watch it or listen to it at any time. So it will, will be available to you. But um, Deb's got a lot going on. So she's going to share a lot of resources that she has for us on an ongoing basis. So I'm super excited to share that. We'll also have a whole bunch of webinars about unit marketing and uh, boy, some how to's for scout book and patrol method and camp for all. We're going to have a whole bunch of webinars coming down the pipe here. So you can find out more at cpcbsa.org slash calendar for that. And I just want to thank you all for joining us today or for if you're tuning in when, when we're not live, when we are recorded, that's awesome too. Really appreciate all that all of you volunteers do for our scouts, just for all of you scouts out there who are just doing amazing things in the community. Don't forget about, uh, about getting your flyers for, for the spring uh, scouting for food that is happening on March 5th. So you're going to want to get a register your, your flyers and your door hangers for that as soon as possible. So go to cpcbsa.org slash SFF for that because that's coming down the pipe before we know it and we're placing an order for all of these all of these door hangers so please do that soon all right thanks again so much for joining us today we will see you next week